moving on to some skincare. Definitely some things I've shown before. One of my all-time favorites, if you've ever seen an empty video of mine, then you have seen these. These are the EPL makeup wipes. I just, I like them all. I get the large size for $2. There are 60 wipes in here, so they last me quite a while, and they're so inexpensive. Or you could get the ones for a dollar that come with 30 wipes. I pretty much like every single different, like, little scent or, like, ingredient one they have. They have, like, a collagen one. They have a green tea, cucumber aloe, collagen, argan oil. They've just got so, so many. So I, of course, had to include that in my favorites. And I have been using these for, I don't know, I would say probably close to, like, six or seven years. Another favorite of mine, I discovered this one I think in 2017, but it's just been a staple of mine. This is from Etude House. It's called the One Shot Clean Mascara Remover. It's one of those like um, two part kind of uh, mascara remover. So you just shake it up until it's all one uh, product. And I love using this to remove my mascara. I do it for my eye makeup too, but it's really good if you have one of those really tough kind of mascaras to remove. I just like to apply this to like a little cotton pad, I place it over my eyes for a few seconds, and it's just really does a good job at melting the mascara away without like doing a whole lot of damage to my lashes. So definitely been a huge fan of this one and I buy so, so many of them. Another favorite, I still can't believe I have been using this for so long. I've probably been using this close to like two years now, but it's still one of my favorite go-tos and this is from Etude House. It's the Bubble Tea Sleeping Pack. I'm like almost done with it and I love this so much because number one, it's so cute, but it actually makes my skin feel so nice. So I just apply this right before I go to bed. I let it sink in probably for like, you know, five minutes or so, so I don't like get any of it on my sheets or my pillowcase. And when I wake up in the morning, my skin feels so smooth and so like silicone-y, like soft and silky. Um, so definitely one of my favorites and maybe one day I will end up completely using this, but I do have a lot of products that I kind of, you know, switch back and forth between. So it's definitely been a favorite of mine to keep coming back to it. Another favorite, this is one I got in October, so a little bit more closer to the end of the year, and this is another BoxyCharm product that I got, and this is from Pharmacy. It's called the Green Clean Makeup Melt Away. So basically this is like a cleansing balm. I have, I think, pretty much completely used this up. There's probably like maybe one half portion left in here that I'm gonna use tonight, but I loved this so much, and this one I think for this size is like $22 from Sephora. I really love the scent of this. It has like a a, um, like a lime kind of scent to it. It's very uh, fresh and I love it so much. So I definitely thoroughly use this product up and I loved it so much. But the only reason why I don't think I would buy it is just because I have another product that is very similar that I think does just as good of a job and it's a little bit less expensive. And that's of course, this is just the little mini one I have. This is the Clean It Zero from Vanillico. This one is a Korean brand. And so I just have the little sample of it here. But since I tried this one, I noticed that it did just as good of a job as this one. So even though I love this one, I probably won't repurchase this one and I'll end up getting the Vanilla Co. one because that one is, I think, probably like 12 bucks or so for at least the same size. But cleansing balms in general, all of the ones that I have tried, I think I've tried four different ones. The Out of the four that I've tried, I've loved three of them and I thought they were so good. There's one I have that I'm still trying to use up before I repurchase another one um, and that one I don't like at all. So as soon as I get through that one, I will probably be buying the Vanilla Co. one. So next I have just a few hair products. The first one is one I've been using on and off for probably close to like five years now. This is from Oro Fluido and this is their hair elixir and I really came back to using this one about four months ago. I love this so much. Number one, it smells so amazing. It's like a vanilla kind of amber scent to it. It smells so good. And sometimes I use this on my hair wet, sometimes use it on dry, but definitely wet has been my favorite way to use it. I like to apply it right after I have kind of like towel dried my hair after washing it. And I feel like it just makes my hair so much silkier and smoother and it's easier to detangle. And because my hair is wet, sometimes like you'd think like water and oil obviously don't mix, but for some reason this just works well on my wet hair. Um, I also feel like it it kind of makes my hair dry faster. I don't know if that's a placebo or not, but I love this one. And if you're using it on dry hair, you definitely only need the tiniest, tiniest drop. Otherwise you can get a little bit greasy, but I use this mainly on the ends of my hair and I love it. Another favorite of mine, this has been the Misha Seven Days Coloring Hair Treatment, the color Ash Gray. My hair is a little bit faded now, but I love this kind of um, silvery tone that it gives my hair. If you want to see what it looks like right after dyeing it, I definitely have a video on that as well. So you can 
can see like what kind of results you can expect if you're using this color on like a platinum -y blonde kind of color hair. So I love this one because it fades so nicely in my hair. It doesn't look super streaky or super um, patchy or anything. And I love just these silvery gray tones on me. I feel like they just suit my skin tone a little bit better. They now have these larger sizes. Um, these are 50 milliliters. So before they just had them in the little packets of 25 milliliters. And um, for this one, it was about three bucks and change. So I stocked up on a couple of these and I think I'm going to stick to doing this kind of color for a little bit. You can definitely dilute them a bit if you want them to be a little softer or not as intense. I also tried the pink brown color earlier this year and that was definitely not a pink brown color but again I have a whole video dedicated to that documenting what my hair looks like after every time I washed it and kind of how it fades and stuff. Definitely a color that's stuck in my hair so much. Um, but yeah, if you definitely want to try out, at least this color in my opinion is one of the, the best ones that they have. I've only tried the two colors though, to be honest. Um, but one of my favorites and one I feel like I'm going to be using for quite a while. Another product, I don't have it with me right now because it's in the shower, but for a long time since I've been blonde, I've been loving using like the shimmer lights, um, hair colors, not hair colors, um, shampoos and conditioners. Um, so there's the actual like Shimmer Lights brand, then I tried the Sally's brand, and then actually Equate came out with their own version, like the Walmart brand. And I like that one the most just because I think it's the least expensive and it's like exactly the same as the other ones. Like the scent is exactly the same, the color, um, how well it works for my hair, pretty much exactly the same at like a fraction of the cost. So, so definitely the Equate one has been one of my favorites and one I would probably go back to using, especially um, since I like having that more purple or like silver tone to my hair. Um, whenever I use that, it just kind of does a really good job at removing some of the brassiness from my hair color. So a few extras that I have, I feel like I've been talking for so long and I'm starting to lose my voice. So I'm just gonna try to quickly um, power through the rest of these. Um, so one of my favorites, I will put a picture of because I've got all my stuff in it right now and I can't really hold this up, but it is a makeup bag that I got from Amazon. It was super inexpensive. It's probably about 20 something bucks um, whenever I purchased it. And I love this makeup bag so, so much. You have little compartments in it that you can um, like move around so you can really kind of customize how you want your makeup bag to be set up. It's really pretty. I love the color of it. It's like this beautiful baby pink color and it's just been a huge favorite of mine. I have the small size so they actually make a larger one. Um, so if you've got a ton of stuff that you like to travel with then you might want to get that one but I've been loving this bag so much. Another thing has been gel polishes. I just honestly I think I started using gel polishes consistently about June and I have never been able to grow my nails long before at all just because I have very thin brittle nails and they would break all the time and since I started consistently using gel polishes I can grow my nails so long like really really long I've never been able to do before um, and even though gel polish is a little bit more expensive I feel like it's just worth it for me because um, I have the little at-home gel polish um, sets and stuff like the little lamps and I love it so much because I can do my nails once and even though it takes a little bit more time than a traditional nail polish, you don't have to worry about dry time and they almost never chip or peel on me. So I can do my nails for maybe like 20 minutes to do my whole set of hands my whole set of hands to do my whole set of fingers and it will last me a good like two to three weeks or until I'm just ready to change the polish again. So I feel like I honestly just can't go back to regular nail polish, which is kind of sad for me because I love nail polish so much and I have a lot of nail polish, but I pretty much just stick to using those for my toes and then I do gels on my nails. So maybe if you're like me and you just cannot grow your nails, try gel nails, even if it's like the little at-home ones to try it out. Um, and it's definitely so easy to do for me because you don't have to like wait and dry and that's the worst part of waiting for regular nail polish to dry is like denting it or you know stuff like that but these just they do not chip they look great forever and I just can't go back to regular nail polish. So a few more things that have been my favorite. Number one has been BoxyCharm. It was the first makeup subscription I've ever tried and it's definitely one I really love. I do monthly videos on that and kind of letting you guys know what products I get, what I think about it, is it worth it. For me I've been loving it because every time I've gotten a box there's always been at least my money's worth of value in it for me some months are better than others but I love that I'm able to try a lot of other makeup brands that I would have never bought for myself and it's just a really good makeup subscription service in my opinion to be honest it is the only one I've tried but so far I've been super happy with it and I've done about I think like nine 
nine or ten months of it so far so I've really been liking it a lot. I feel like it's great for people who are just beginning with makeup and they want to grow their makeup collection. Um, I think that's definitely who it's best for. If you already have a large makeup collection like I do it does get a little bit overwhelming but it's definitely a really good service in my opinion. Another all-time favorite of mine has been going to the BTS concert. I went to their Fort Worth show and I went to the Sunday show and it was amazing. Like I remember I had to get tickets like five Five months in advance and it was so stressful but it was such a fun time I loved it so much they have been like my favorite band for like the past like two and a half years or so now and if you ever get to go to a concert it's like one of the most magical experiences ever however there's this really weird kind of like happening where I almost feel like I barely even remember the concert just because I was so enthralled with the whole thing. It's like I remember like all the time leading up to it and I remember all the videos on my phone but whenever I actually like try to recall the um, concert it was just like almost a blur in my mind just because I was like screaming and fangirling the whole time but it was one of the best concerts. No, it was the best concert I've ever been to in my life. So hopefully I will be fortunate enough to go again sometime. Um, but yeah, probably the highlight of my year. And then quickly, some of my last few kind of like media favorites for TV shows. I pretty much just watch like Survivor and like Korean dramas. And that's pretty much all I watch. I don't really even watch any like American television shows pretty much ever. Um, so some of my favorite dramas that I've watched this year that I really loved, if you need some recommendations or if you haven't already seen these, these are some that I loved this year. Not all of these came out this year, but they're definitely all ones that I watched this year. So the first one I loved was While You Were Sleeping. I think the lead in that one is like my all-time favorite actor. Um, he's been in a lot of shows that I've loved, but I definitely really liked While You Were Sleeping. Um, I just finished Come and Hug Me a couple of weeks ago. That one was a good one. It's definitely a little bit more on the um, kind of like a, not gory, what's the word? Suspenseful thriller, kind of, you know, serial killer on the loose type of thing. So that one was a really good one. Just Between Lovers is a good one. That one had to do with like a shopping mall incident that collapses and the survivors of it. So that one was a really good one. W was another one that I really loved. That one was so good because I feel like a lot of K-dramas can kind of get, um, what's the word? Not repetitive or predictable. It can get very predictable. There were so many like left turns and stuff in the storyline that I was not expecting. So I really liked that one and then Cheese in the Trap was a good one. I don't even know why I liked that one so much. It was just something about it like I had to keep watching the episodes. Overall I feel like the show was okay but for some reason I just remember that one being good. And then the one I'm watching right now is a really good one. This one's called The Ghost Detective. I like this one too. It's definitely a little bit more on the like spooky supernatural slightly gory side so if you're not into anything like that then probably skip this one but I also like the lead actress in this one. She's like such a good actress and um um, she was also in one of my other favorites, Hello My 20s, or it's also called um, Age of Youth. So definitely like that as well. And then finally for podcasts that I've been loving, definitely I feel like this was the year of podcasts for me. Um, the one I loved the absolute most is like My Favorite Murder. It's definitely a really funny comedy slash crime podcast. So it's kind of like almost unsettling at first because I'm like, oh my god, there's these two girls like joking about like people being murdered and stuff. But like if you get their humor, then you'd probably really love it. Um, but I love that one. So that was probably like my most favorite podcast of the year. Um, I also love Up and Vanished. I listened to both those seasons and they're really good. I've listened to Atlanta Monster as well. They also, I think, produced that one. So that was a really good one. And then they have a new one coming out soon. I think it might be about the Zodiac Killer, but I can't wait to listen to that one if it's out or if it's coming out. I don't know. <laughs> um, another one I loved. This one actually I think I listened to, was it this year? I don't know if it's this year or not, but it's S-Town. That one was a really interesting one. A very weird podcast about this very kind of kooky character, but it's very sad, but definitely a good one. Um, I also like Serial Podcast. That one was like, you know, one of the really big ones. I liked season one the most. I didn't really care for season two. And then I started season three, but then I just kind of only listen to a couple episodes, so I gotta go back and listen to that one and see if I like it or not. But so far, if you're gonna listen to Serial, definitely season number one is the one to listen to. A few other that I listened to, um, Dirty John, that one came out I think last year, and then now there's a Bravo like limited series on that one. I haven't watched it at all. I think I'll probably watch it when it's all over. It might already be over, I don't know. So um, that one, and then Dr. Death was a really like spooky one about this like doctor who has caused so many deaths and just Oh, it really freaks me out and I'm about to have surgery soon so that one 
really freaks me out. Um, so yeah, hopefully I don't die. Also, finally, YouTube has given smaller creators the um, community tab, which has been around for about a year for every other um, YouTube creator. It's so annoying that YouTube does that where they'll roll out these new features, but they'll only give it to certain people or you have to have like a certain amount of subscribers to get this, like, which is so frustrating because they've already taken away like a lot of people's partnership status at the beginning of the year, which luckily um, I still have my partner status, which is good. Um, but pretty much I hate whenever they come up with these new features, but don't give it to everyone. Um, because like right now I literally this month got the community tab, which like I said, has been around for a year, which is basically just like a feed, which I've started to use. I've done a poll so far. I like to post little teasers for videos and things. So, um, definitely check out my community tab if you want to kind of have a, another way to interact with me. I'm going to try to do more stuff on that and, um, just kind of like, I don't know, I guess connect with you guys more, but I'm so aggravated that I don't have the YouTube stories option yet. Hopefully they will be giving that s at least sooner than a year. It's kind of what I've always wanted for YouTube because even though I do have an Instagram and stuff, I'm not very active on it and I don't like having all these like accounts on different you know websites and apps and things it's just so much to keep track of and i wish i could just like do all my interaction through my youtube channel and stuff so hopefully i will be getting stories options soon i think for now it's only for people who have 10,000 subscribers and up and i have just under 3,000 subscribers right now so Maybe they'll give it to me, maybe they won't, but hopefully in the future I will be able to do that and I feel like I could just connect with you guys more on a more personal level than just videos and stuff. If YouTube just gave like these features to everyone equally. But that is pretty much all of my favorites of 2018. I'm sure there's like a million and one products that I have forgotten or things like that, but these are just some of the ones I can really think of right now. I feel like I'm starting to lose my voice from talking so long, so let me know what your favorite products were for this year and yeah. If you you guys enjoyed please like and subscribe you can follow me on instagram link is below and until my next video i will talk to you guys later bye